In June of 2013, Amy Warden had as her first soap challenge contest um, the making of a peacock squirrel soap. And since that time, that has become a very popular method. It's a beautiful soap pattern. Um, you can find lots of examples of it on YouTube. So I guess what I'm going to do here is not really anything new from a YouTube standpoint. Uh, it is fairly new to me. I've only made a couple of these and I have a new uh, soap comb that I got from Brambleberry that I want to try out. Uh, in the past I've used homemade ones with uh, kebab skewers in cardboard and that actually works pretty well, but I decided to get a more permanent one. Um, I tend to get the homemade ones bent or broken. So anyway, I'm going to be uh, using the Brembleberry comb and we'll see what happens here. I've had real problems in making this video with my camera turning itself off uh, at the most inopportune times. So what you're going to see here is one batch of soap being mixed up and poured uh, up to the point that I'm ready to do the uh, comb swirl. And then you'll notice that suddenly the batch of soap and the mold that it's poured in changes. So we'll be back to the 15 bar wooden mold that I use from Papa's Woodcraft rather than the Brambleberry mold with the silicone liner that is what uh, you see up until that point. So the process is the same throughout. We are going to end up with the same uh, soap, but uh, just to make the video continuous, that's the way I've done it. This is the new soap comb that I got from Brambleberry. Um, it has a plastic top or handle, and then it has uh, long screws driven down into it to make the actual uh, teeth of the comb. And the screws, because they are screws with a, with a nut at the bottom, they are removable. And so I've removed the end one um, because the mold I'm using is a little too short for this comb. I'm going to use my 15 bar wooden mold from Papa's Woodcraft. One thing that kind of surprised me about this mold is that I bought it from Brambleberry thinking that it would be the perfect length for their 18 bar mold that they sell. Um, in fact, it's a little short for that, so it's difficult to line it up in that mold. Um, it's short in the sense that the handle is shorter than the sides of the mold, so you have to support it at a certain level. But it's also short in the sense that if you're using that mold with the um, bar dividers, or even if you're not and you don't want an extremely deep bar of soap, the uh, length of these screws is not quite enough to get down to where you need to be to swirl it. So you actually have to hold the handle below the level of the side of the mold. So I'm solving that problem by um, using my other mold with this, for which it works really pretty much perfectly with one screw removed. Oils are at 93 degrees Fahrenheit and my lime water is at 108. I already put the uh, essential oils in the base oils and I have sodium lactate in the lime. If this recipe behaves as it usually does, it should come to a nice emulsion but take a very long time to come to trace. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. It's a good thorough emulsion, no thickening at all happening. So what I'm going to do now is pour that batter into a clean pitcher, that's not the one I have to lie in, so that I can pour it into my uh, color bottles easier. And you can see that's just about water thin, but it's a good emulsion.
Um, but I went back and, and uh, reviewed Amy Warden's uh, original tutorial on how to do this. A couple things she pointed out. First of all, she said you want a very slow moving recipe, obviously, but that it's really important to have it very thoroughly emulsified. Otherwise, you can get um, uh, brittleness and just not a good texture to your soap. The other thing she said is that when you shake these up, be sure that wipe will aim them away from your face and uh, let go carefully because they tend to build up pressure as you shake them. Um, and so it tends to squirt a little bit of soap out when you first let go. Uh, thin trails back and forth with each color. Got some areas where the blue is pretty much missing at this point. Nope, no more is going to come out of there. Okay, now the fun part. This is the point at which my camera stopped on the other batch. So this is a whole new batch of soap. Um, pretty much the same recipe, exactly the same colors. Uh, the one difference in the recipe is I ran out of olive oil, so this has uh, more high oleic sunflower and no olive in it. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same. I've poured it in very much the same way, and so I'm ready to do the comb now. So I'm going to lower the um, spokes of the comb right against the wall, and this, um, the comb is a nice 
length for this mold in the, that it sits on the sides of the mold. That will allow me to drag it very cleanly and very straight um, across the soap. Also, the screws are almost long enough to touch the floor of the mold, but just not quite, so it won't scratch the freezer paper. So here we go. I want to do this slow enough that it doesn't cause a lot of soap to build up on my side of it and maybe go over the edge. I'll bring it all the way to the wall of the mold and then straight up and out. I think that worked pretty well. So now for the um, peacock swirls, we want S curves here. In and out, over and over. So the little bumps touch each other when you do that. Just do a little bit of touch up where the pattern didn't come out very clearly. Actually, it's pretty good, most of it. Yeah, I think I like that as it is. Here it is looking straight down on it right after it was poured. I do plan to uh, seep pop this, so I'll put it in a 170 degree oven for a couple of hours. It is the next day and the soap has been cut into 15 bars. I sprayed it uh, when I first put it in the oven and then again about half an hour later with some alcohol. So it did not produce a significant amount of soda ash this time. Um, the surface is still not a good clear pattern though, so I think I probably will shave the tops on these. The soap is finished and cut. I have shaved off the uh, top surface to make it smoother. So these are top surfaces of some of the bars. Here are some ends. That's quite a wild pattern, isn't it? And then some sides of the bars. And then some bottoms of the bars. Similar pattern to the top, but they're kind of dull. I think that's, well, I'm not sure why. I was thinking there might have been more white on the bottom, but I don't know why there would be. So there's probably one of the best ones.